There are 95 survivor perks in Dead by Daylight. That means literally thousands of potential combinations for ways to play, and they span from terrible to amazing to everything in between. Some perks are so good, it may feel like you have to use them to be successful. Your playstyle may hinge on having them, and so those perks become a crutch on which you stand. Now I'm not saying that having a crutch perk or 10 is bad. Every player plays the game differently, and as such, every player has different tools they may feel a need to use in order to support the playstyle they must enjoy. A perk doesn't even have to be good to be a crutch, and today we're going to be talking about some of mine. What's going on everybody? I'm Poji Force. I'm a survivor main in Dead by Daylight. This is Poji Force Plays, and you're watching my top 10 crutch survivor perks, plus three very good perks that I actually don't like using. Number 10. There is a wrong way and a right way to use self-care. And since oftentimes you'll hear people like myself, not so jokingly, refer to self-care as a killer perk, it is most often used the wrong way. Self-care has two main functions. The first being that you can heal yourself without a medkit at 50% healing speed. The second is that healing yourself with a medkit is done so 20% more efficiently, meaning you use 20% fewer charges on your medkit. Most beginner players and even some veteran players will fixate on the healing without a medkit, since potentially unlimited healing sounds very appealing. And do you really want to rely on solo queue teammates for back tickles? Okay, no. You. You're doing that on purpose. The problem with this is that Dead by Daylight is really a game about using your time as efficiently as possible. A couple seconds can make the difference between getting hit or escaping the killer. The difference between successfully completing a generator or being forced off it. The default heal takes 16 seconds to complete without perks or add-ons. So if you're doing that at 50% speed, that's 32 seconds you're spending to heal, perhaps longer if the killer is running Sloppy Butcher. Those 32 plus seconds a survivor is doing the funky chicken in a corner is time spent not doing generators, not breaking hex totems, and not saving your local Dwight from the hook, which is a lot of value for the killer. So you may be asking why I'd put self-care on a list of my top 10 crutch perks. Well first, it's number 10 on the list, so don't get too excited. Second, I use it primarily for its other ability, the extra healing item efficiency. I love healing builds, and squeezing as much value as possible out of my healing items is one of my favorite pastimes. Your normal heal will consume 16 charges from a medkit, the number of charges of a brown or green medkit. Doing so with self-care reduces the charges used to 13, meaning that saves three charges to use for either accelerated healing on an ally or normal speed healing on yourself later. And again, every second is precious. With a yellow med kit, you can get almost two full heals out of self-care. And with a purple med kit, almost three. If you get close to finished healing when your charges run out, at that point, topping yourself off with the first part of self-care isn't that big of a deal. That's also before charge add-ons, or other item efficiency perks, such as Botany Knowledge, Streetwise, or Built to Last, which can extend the life of your med kit even further. So, because I like healing builds so much, self-care almost always finds a spot in a build, making it my crutch perk number 10. Number 9. The Dead by Daylight economy runs on blood points, and one of the best ways to earn blood points is to complete challenges from one of the game's many tomes. If you spend any amount of time pursuing survivor challenges, you're going to see a challenge to either break totems or open chests. Every trial starts with five totems and three chests, before offerings and perks. And since Dead by Daylight is a game about time, you're going to want to find these as quickly as possible. Aside from the one chest in basement, locating totems and chests 
can be difficult and time consuming, but thankfully there are a number of perks to help with that. Plunderer's Instinct makes locating chests a breeze, and Small Game and Counter Force make dealing with totems less of a chore. But the best by far is Detective's Hunch. Whenever a generator is completed, Detective's Hunch shows you the auras of basically every stationary object in the game all the way out to 64 meters. This includes generators, hooks, and most importantly, totems and chests. What's more, if you're carrying a map that can track these items, you can easily locate both chests and totems once the generators start popping. That's why even though I don't always run builds focused on these secondary objectives, whenever I do, Detective's Hunch always has a place on the build. And that is why Detective's Hunch is my crutch perk number nine. Number eight. When it comes to healing focused builds, it's important to bring a good medkit. And since the green emergency medkit has the fastest self heal in the game, it's often the best choice. However, sometimes the entity isn't very forthcoming with emergency medkits. And so we're forced to come up with alternatives. That is when pharmacy comes into play. Pharmacy ensures that the first chest you open in a trial will always provide an emergency medkit. It also allows you to open chests 80% faster and reduce the hearing distance by 8 meters, making it both faster and safer. Although you have to locate a chest first, both Plunderer's Instinct and Detective's Hunch can help with that. Or you can just get lucky. What I like to do though when I want to save a perk slot and still find a chest quickly is use a basement blueprint offering. Since basement is always guaranteed to have a chest, being able to dictate where basement spawns and then locate it within the first 20 seconds of the trial can ensure that I find my medkit as soon as possible. Additionally, you can run item efficiency perks or ace in the hole to potentially loot additional medical supplies or to get even more value out of your free emergency medkit. That is why whether I'm trying to farm more supplies or simply don't want to risk what I already have, Pharmacy is my go-to, and my clutch perk, number eight. Number seven. Now, I'm not the best person at skill checks. I can hit good checks more often than not, but sometimes I will miss a skill check inevitably, and trying to hit a great skill check can be frustrating especially when 15 stacks of Fast Track are on the line. That's why lately, I've started using Stakeout. Stakeout consumes a token every time you make a good skill check and turns it into a great skill check. Tokens charge over time while you are in the killer's terror radius, but not in a chase, and you can have a maximum of four tokens at any given time. I tend to favor risky plays and often work on generators close to where a teammate is looping the killer, so getting stakeout stacks is pretty easy for me. Using a stakeout token on a generator repair also grants an additional 1% progress. That may not sound like much, but 1% progress shaves up to 0.8 seconds off the generator repair, and in Dead by Daylight even fractions of a second can change the course of a trial. Especially if you get multiple skill checks or combo it with the aforementioned fast track. It's also an active boost rather than a passive one, making it more fun and engaging. And that's why Stakeout is crutch perk number seven. Number six. If we're going to talk about generator repair times, we have to talk about Prove Thyself. But before we do, we have to explain a little bit about how repairing generators works. Repairing a generator by yourself without perks, toolboxes, or skill checks takes roughly 80 seconds. When another survivor joins you, they're also contributing to generator progress, but each survivor's repair progress is slowed. This slowdown gets progressively worse for each additional survivor working on that same generator. Although Prove Thyself does grant bonus blood points for co-op actions, its real value is what it does for generator repairs. For every other survivor within 4 meters of you, it grants you and those survivors a stacking 15% increase to repair speeds to a maximum increase of 45% to all four survivors. What that means is the repair penalty for three or four survivors is significantly reduced, 
and for two survivors, negates the repair penalty entirely. So a generator that would normally take about 80 seconds to repair by yourself can take only 40 seconds with two survivors and one of them using Prove Thyself. Without Prove Thyself, it takes 49 seconds for two survivors to complete a generator, or in other words, it saves you about 9 seconds, more than any other perk that affects generator progress. The downside is that you do need another survivor to benefit from, from the perk, but the efficiency is undeniable. And that is why Prove Thyself is my crutch perk number six. Number five. Continuing with the theme of doing things faster, we have Resilience coming in at number five. Resilience provides a 9% increased speed to all healing, repairing, unhooking, cleansing, chest opening, gate opening, vaulting actions while injured. Basically, if you're injured, it makes you do damn near everything 9% faster. While 9% isn't as much as, say, prove thyself, botany knowledge, or desperate measures, its application to so many different actions grants a lot of extra time over the course of the trial. Yes, you do need to be injured, but unless you're a stealth god, you're going to get injured at some point. And if you're smart, you can regulate your health to get the most out of resilience, then heal up when things get a little too dicey. Resilience is also part of a very popular build known as the Vault Build, where you combine it with Spine Chill to vault windows and pallets that much faster in a chase. Basically, Resilience is a perk that can turn a bad situation into a good one and fits on most any build, and that is why it is my crutch perk number five. Number four. We're still continuing with the theme of doing things faster, and since I literally just mentioned it, my number four crutch perk is Spine Chill. Spine Chill provides 6% bonus speed to all of the same actions as Resilience, as long as the killer is in 32 meters and facing you. The downside is the success areas of skill checks while Spine Chill is active is reduced. Though the activation mechanics seem oddly specific, and the penalty seems a bit rough for a bonus smaller than most other perks already mentioned on this list, Spine Chill is actually quite good. The penalty to skill checks is not unmanageable, and any improvement to action speed is good. But arguably, the best part of the perk is the information it unintentionally, or perhaps at this point intentionally, gives you. If Spine Chill lights up and flickers on and off, it likely means the killer is either searching nearby, or a teammate is looping the killer nearby. You can determine which based on other context clues in your surroundings. If Spine Chill lights up and stays lit, the killer is likely heading to your location. At that point, you can choose to either use the bonus action speed to finish whatever it is you are doing before the killer gets there, you could leave the area or hide to avoid getting caught, or you could relocate to be in a better position for when a chase inevitably breaks out. Basically, Spine Chill does the same job as Premonition, only way better. Spine Shell even works against killers who are undetectable, so stealth killers like Pig, Wraith, and Ghostface are killers using perks like Tinkerer or Trail of Torment still won't be able to surprise you. For the longest time, Spine Shell was practically super glued into all of my survivor builds, and even now it's still among my favorite perks. For me, it was really the very definition of a crutch perk, but there are others still that fit even better, and that is why Spine Shell comes in at number 4. Number three. Remember when I said the economy runs on blood points? It costs thousands, millions even of blood points to properly level up a character and equip them with good perks and items. That is where We're Going to Live Forever comes into play. We're Going to Live Forever allows you to heal a dying survivor 100% faster, which means you can help up a slugged teammate in eight seconds rather than 16. This alone is a pretty powerful effect that I personally have seen reverse some bad situations, but it has another power. For every safe hook save, pallet save, flashlight save, or protection hit you take, We're Going to Live Forever gains a token, to a maximum of 4. For every token you have at the end of the trial, you gain a stacking 25% bonus to your blood points earned, maxing out at a bonus 100%. Depending on how well you performed, 
This could translate to earning tens of thousands of bonus BP on top of any you got from offerings. At high levels of play, a more altruistic playstyle seems almost required for survival. But even at lower ranks, it's easy enough to earn a token or two for a nice post-game blood point bounty. Personally, the promise of frustrating slugging killers, plus all of the sweet, sweet extra blood points, makes the Siren's call of we're going to live forever pretty hard to ignore. And that is why this perk is crutch number three. Number two. A lot of survivor mains will tell you that if you want to survive, then you need an exhaustion perk. And there are plenty to choose from. Sprint Burst, Balance Landing, Lithe, just to name a few. I enjoy a good trial with Balance Landing every now and then, but for me, there is only one exhaustion perk that I feel utterly dependent on. I'm of course talking about Dead Hard. While injured and sprinting, Dead Hard lets you press the active ability button to lunge forward with a very brief moment of invincibility, after which you are exhausted for 40 seconds. While Dead Hard may not let you cover as much ground as other exhaustion perks, it makes up for it in versatility and ease of use. All exhaustion perks have specific methods of activation, most of which either only happen rarely, are forced to use at bad times, or in the case of Sprint Burst, happens way too often. Dead Heart's requirements of sprinting while injured are easy enough to meet, and being able to activate it whenever you choose gives you way more control in a chase. The perk is also extremely versatile thanks to the invincibility frames and the speed of the lunge. Not only can it be used to quickly reach the relative safety of a pallet or window, but well-timed uses of Dead Heart can safely pass over bear traps, traverse small pits, or dodge the killer's attacks. It's true that bad timing can also lead to being exhausted on the ground, but of all the exhaustion perks, Dead Heart has provided me the most benefit in my time playing Dead by Daylight. There is no other perk of its kind that actively makes me feel more vulnerable for not bringing it along. And so Dead Heart rightfully earns its place as my crutch perk number two. Before we move on, it's time for me to talk about three perks that I actually rarely use. These are all perks that generally the Dead by Daylight community sees as being very good. But for one reason or another, I just don't really use them much. These aren't in any particular order, so we're just going to jump right in, starting with Sprint Burst. There is actually some debate in the Dead by Daylight community about which exhaustion perk is better, Dead Hard or Sprint Burst. As you can probably tell, I am very much on the Dead Hard side of that argument. My problem with Sprint Burst... My problem with Sprint Burst is just how easy it is to waste it. At any point when you start sprinting, you move at 150% movement speed for 3 seconds, after which you are exhausted for 40 seconds. Sprinting is something you do all the time though, so the only way you can save Sprint Burst is to either never sprint, or carefully 99% your exhaustion and then never stop sprinting until you're ready to use it again. While the former is easier to do than the latter, walking everywhere is not ideal in a game where you need to make the most of every second. And if the killer ever finds you, you're definitely not walking away from them, so you will be forced to use your sprint burst almost immediately at the start of the chase. This puts the pressure on you to either lose the killer immediately somehow, or be forced into a chase where you no longer have an exhaustion perk as a means to gain distance or escape. Other exhaustion perks have triggering actions that allow you to be more intentional about their use, even if the opportunity isn't always there. And perks like Balance Landing and Head On have additional utility. Sprint Burst offers you little control over when you use it, and when you do, you just go fast for three seconds. Now, I recognize Sprint Burst is a very accessible perk, and it has its uses, but every time I use it, I just find myself missing dead hard. No perk has been more meta-defining, or more divisive, than Decisive Strike. Decisive Strike has always been a very strong perk, with only the most recent nerf in 2021 starting to curb its popularity. The version of Decisive Strike I was most familiar with was pretty simple. Once you were rescued from the hook, Decisive Strike would be ready for 60 seconds. If the killer picked you up during that time, Decisive Strike would activate and you would receive a skill check. If you succeeded, you would stun the killer, escape the grab, and become the obsession. 
Whether you passed or failed, Decisive Strike would permanently deactivate for the rest of the trial. Although it was meant to be a perk that prevented aggressive tunneling, the 60 second timer was, and still is really, fairly lengthy. Killers would hesitate to pick up survivors that had been hooked recently to avoid a glass shard to the face, and a lot of survivors would abuse the free reign Decisive Strike gave them by immediately beginning to heal or repair right in front of the killer as soon as they were unhooked. I was not one such survivor. Whenever I used Decisive Strike, it was usually for its intended purpose as an anti-tunneling perk, and whenever I was unhooked, my first priority was almost always to leave the area and hide should the killer come back to challenge the unhook. I don't know if the Dead by Daylight community is a lot less toxic than the player pl base assumes, or just that the threat of a Decisive Strike was that pressing in killers' minds, but I was almost never tunneled off hook. And so usually by the time the killer had found me again, the activation window had closed. On the rare occasion I actually did get to use it, oftentimes I would miss the skill check. Like I said when I was talking about stakeout, I'm not the best player when it comes to skill checks. And the one on decisive strike is more difficult than average. Even when I did succeed the skill check, I found the stun usually only bought me a little bit more time, rather than escaping the tunnel altogether. So even though I equipped Decisive Strike frequently upon unlocking its Teachable, my use of it quickly tapered off until I relied more on the nebulous threat of a Decisive Strike, the meta of the time provided, rather than actually equipping the perk itself. Since the nerf, Decisive Strike now has a list of several different actions a survivor could take that would end the activation timer early, further removing my windows of opportunity for its use. That is why, although Decisive Strike is an infamous perk that has left an indelible mark on the Dead by Daylight game, I don't find myself desiring all that much to use it, especially in its current incarnation. Unbreakable is the third perk that I don't use all that much, even though it too is a strong perk that has left an impact on the game. Unbreakable lets you recover from the dying state 35% faster, and lets you recover fully from the dying state once per trial. Unbreakable was, and is, the best anti-slugging perk in the game, but its usefulness is dependent entirely on the killer. If the killer doesn't intend or is even willing to slug, and instead always picks up after they get it down, you won't be getting any real value out of the perk. And since you almost never know who your killer is ahead of time, this perk could be a bit hit or miss. This was a bit different when the old version of Decisive Strike was around, as the fear of eating a stun would have killers resort to slugging more often. This put killers in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation against survivors who were using both Decisive Strike and Unbreakable, a combo many killers not so lovingly referred to as the small pee pee build. But thanks to the Decisive Strike nerf and the perks drop in popularity, killers are less afraid to pick up survivors immediately, making the use case for Unbreakable more unreliable. So even though Unbreakable remains unchanged and is still a strong perk, I'm rarely going to be using it. So before I reveal my number one Survivor Crutch perk, let's go back over the list. Number 10, Self Care. Number 9, Detective's Hunch. Number 8, Pharmacy. Number 7, Stakeout. Number six, prove thyself. Number five, resilience. Number four, spine chill. Number three, we're going to live forever. Number two, dead hard. Finally, it's time to reveal my number one crutch perk in Dead by Daylight as a survivor. This perk isn't flashy or complicated, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Iron Will is one of the first survivor perks in Dead by Daylight, and to this day remains as one of its strongest. When you are injured, Iron Will reduces the sounds of your breathing and grunts of pain by 100%. This actually means that the survivor is even quieter while injured than they are healthy. Sound is extremely important in Dead by Daylight, to the point where it impacts a player's character choices. For example, Ace is chosen a lot because even without Iron Will, he's relatively quiet while injured. Meanwhile, certain survivors will bellow at the top of their lungs if they so much as get a paper cut. 
I'm looking at you, Wash. Kiss my grits. The reason for this is that aside from scratch marks, sound is one of the best clues a killer has for locating and chasing survivors. The sound of crows, generator repairs, healing, sprinting footsteps, grunts of pain, and yes, even just their breathing. I'm not the best killer player in the world, but even I have occasionally been able to find a stealthy survivor on their breathing alone. So having a perk that can make you quiet as a mouse can make avoiding detection or losing the killer in a chase that much easier. That's why a passive, deceptively simple perk can be so strong. Not to mention these other perks that work only when injured, is it any wonder that I try to fit it onto every build where I can? And that is why Iron Will is my number one crutch survivor perk. Hey everyone, if you made it to the end of the video, you are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think and would you like to see more videos like this one in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed and let me know what your favorite survivor crutch perk is. But until next time, thank you again for watching. I'm Poji Force, and you guys stay awesome. I'll catch you later.